Hello, my name is Iver, uh, one of the co-founders and roaster, green buyer of Chromatic Coffee Company. And um, we've been doing this since 2012 and it's been pretty awesome. It's been a long journey. It's been quite a while since we've made a video. So this one's gonna be a little bit different. Obviously, you can see my face. I'm gonna do a little more of a just casual thing because it's all about relationships. And this time of year gets me thinking about all kinds of relationships, not just the relationships with your partners or parents or children or whatever other lovely people you have in your life, but the, the relationship that's at the cornerstone of our business model. And that's relationship driven direct trade coffee. Looking at Central America, I'm Hispanic. I grew up in a Hispanic household and I live in South America. My mom's from, from Chile. I, I speak Spanish fluently, so I've always had an affinity towards the, the Latin countries and, and building really strong relationships there. We have strong relationships elsewhere. But Gloria Rodriguez is the first producer who I ever met back in 2010, before Chromatic was even a thing. And I went to go visit her in her farm in El Salvador. She had several lots, but one of them being Finca San Jose, uh, great for where we are in the world. We love San Jose. It's where we're from, and it was the name of her father. These, these relationships are, are really crucial because you may see a bag of coffee on the shelf. We see a labor of love and dedication and commitment that has spanned many, many years and the results from that. But it's more than just purchasing coffee. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go off in a million different directions. I'm going to try to stay focused on just this one thing because it, it, it's all intertwined. And, and that's one of the things that attracts me. It's the, the interconnectedness and the, the complication of how intertwined things can be if you're looking for true quality. Because I believe that true quality doesn't begin in the cup. It doesn't begin with the roast. It doesn't begin with the sourcing. It begins with the quality of lives of all of us in the value chain the better the quality of life, the better we can dedicate ourselves to this craft and the better product we can create as a result. And it gives us more freedom to experiment and introduce new ideas and new concepts while still going for that classic excellence and those best practices learned over time. For me, it's really knowing everything or as much as you possibly can of, of the, the human struggle that it is to do anything that's worth worth its weight. And really the, the, the goal of Relationship Driven is to, to see the humanity of the person behind the product and to look out for them and to really promote a different idea of sustainability. Just not, not just financial sustainability and not just ecological sustainability, but, but the whole chain. You know, with, with Gloria, our families know each other. My mom has met her, my wife has met her, there's a lot of really beautiful things that you can see and understand of what it is that they themselves are going through to get you this really amazing quality product. It's been a long, long relationship. Really lovely, really beautiful. And there's always coffees that, that they have available for us. Like right now, we're gonna show you a little bit of the Mama Tita, which is coming out. And Mama Tita has a really cool story. All these coffees have such cool stories that you really get to experience it when you're out there driving on the fields with the producer. But like Finca San Jose, Santa Marta micro lot from Finca Nahapa, the yellow Pacamaras, the Amarancias, Homaro, which is a really cool variety that we were able to debut that mutated on their farm. So it's like exclusive to them. The Elefantes, similar story, like mutations that occurred on their farm that are varieties cultivars that are specific to them, that land, that soil, that family, that multi-generational aspect to it. And every direct trade, every relationship can look different. Each one is unique in that sense. But staying on topic of relationship, like Finca San Jose. San Jose is named after Gloria's father, who's named Jose. And Santa Marta after her mother, who's named Marta. Mamatita was a plot of land that I remember visiting 
before Gloria actually purchased it and owned it because apparently the, the neighbor producer wasn't really managing the land and she was so concerned that some pest or some disease would develop on his lot that she was willing to expand some of her, her coffee farms. There's this beautiful, beautiful red bird bone, slightly higher elevation than Finca San Jose and it was like right next to Finca San Jose. I loved how she, she presented this story to me because Finca San Jose is on the west side of the mountain, mountain range being um, Apaneca y La Matepec, has a beautiful view of Santa Ana, and Santa Marta is on the east side of the mountain, and they were separated, and Mama Tita was the nickname that Gloria had for her mother, so she figured she would reunite the two of them, San Jose and Mama Tita, so they could be next to each other. So these little beautiful aspects of themselves, of their heart, that end up as the name, that end up as this symbolic gesture of, of the things that we value, the things that we hold dear. One example that I want to bring up also as, as a symbol, as a sign of, of this commitment and these goals that we have and that we share is Gloria Rodriguez's son-in-law, Luis Rodriguez. He introduced me to a producer back in 2000. 13, 14, somewhere around there. And that producer happened to be Rosalio Ventura in Honduras because Luis is also involved with a lot of other coffee things. But this Pyrenema cultivar came to his cupping table and he thought it was very interesting and very curious and thought of me as a potential interested buyer. So when I flew out to El Salvador that year, Luis and I hopped in a car and drove to Honduras as well to meet Rosalio. And I had also met Rosalio's uh, cousin, Idardo, and that was really great. And then as Idardo and I started building our own relationship and doing other coffees and seeing what things we can get into, it was really lovely. I met his mom, I met his dad. Her mom made this amazing chicken soup that was just amazing. And, and this is where I have avoided making a video like this because it can get a little personal interpersonal and Idardo being young like a young guy he was really wanting to get into the coffee thing and take it over from his dad and his mom and his father was starting to fall ill he was able to work on a lot with his dad before he passed away and that lot that they prepared together they did something really really beautiful and they named the lot after my son whose name is brio and i have the example right here this is a gift from my mom she had it put in something but you can see right there it's my son's name I'll show you a photo of it but it was this beautiful symbolic gesture in a celebration of life and and the reality of of our lives right so that really established a good foundation for how we move forward, they know that we're gonna buy, they know that we're gonna see them through thick and thin, they know that despite the seasons and, and crop yields and everything like that, we'll do our best to, to see their humanity and, and really work with them through those things. So relationship, direct trade, really is this hallmark of of sustainability and quality at every stage because we're concerned with the types of fertilizers they use. We're concerned with their, their land management. We're concerned with all these things and we keep tabs on it. And we know that we can trust them to do the same because they share those same values because we've broken bread with them. We've been in their homes. I've traveled there. Rosalio and Idardo, they've, they've met my son when he was a year old and we took him out there along with my wife and my mom. So like, a real family affair so the the buyer and the seller can see the humanity in each other and then we keep on upping the quality we introduce different experimental coffees yeast inoculations things like this that can be really risky but they we give them the guarantee that we're going to buy it so the financial aspect is taken care of now they only have to worry about actually doing an excellent job and we believe that they will we believe that they do and they have and we've created some really amazing products alongside with them and that's the thing that's really beautiful about the relationship is that we can create types of coffees along with them we're gonna go over 
show you how we brewed this coffee. This is not a brew video. The, the physical representation of something that's important to us, which is the brew card. Some basic guidelines of brew methods that we think the coffee perform best in. So we'll go over that. Donnie's gonna help me shoot some video. We'll get into it a little bit, show you how the card is used, show you the beautiful photography and the thought process that goes into it. We are very DIY. We like doing everything in house. So all the other videos that you see on YouTube, we have done it. We have brought friends in, but many nights of editing till 5 a.m., music produced by our own head roaster, Aiden, uh, who's been rock solid in every creative like form from the actual designing of the roast profiles. And you know, I do the great majority of the graphics still as I'm sipping on the cup of coffee that I'm designing for just to really try and encapsulate what style, what kind of vibe we, we experience from it and represent that to you in, in, in an artful, creative, DIY way, uh, which we're not gonna give up on doing. So let's get right to it, take you to the roastery and brew up this cup. I'll be talking a little bit more about that with you. Let's go. Beautiful light roast you can see right here. Out of this French press and the V60, we're gonna adapt the V60 recipe to the origami. So the origami is slightly higher flow. We add our coffee. After about 30 seconds, you're gonna to wanna to start your first actual pour right down the center. So slow spirals out. That initial bloom is to make sure that we saturate all the grounds evenly. In general, you're gonna wanna keep your bed pretty low. You don't wanna bring it all the way to the top. It adds a lot more pressure onto the, the small point that it has to come out at. So this way we can keep a much more consistent flow. But then our third pour, Same thing, you wanna try and maintain that, that level that the foam creates. You don't really wanna go much above it. We're going up to our total water of 360 grams. Let the coffee draw down. Oh, it's like citrus flower. It really is like lemon blossom on the nose. That citrusy, lemony quality, flowery, really pleasant. There's some malt-like sweetness, some like, raw sugars and smell. And I think this coffee is best enjoyed out of your favorite cup, of course. I like these kind of fancy Avensi glasses by Acosa Brew House. Um, it's really like a wine glass. Like they have different shapes for different coffees that accentuate different characteristics. Um, yeah, it can, really, it can really affect the way of how you taste the coffee and what, what is present and, and you can highlight or like push down certain qualities that you prefer, um, whether it's like mouthfeel or acidity, sweetness, all these things can go. Mm, you can really get that aroma, like really focused. Yeah, lots of chocolate, lots of caramel. Mm. Yeah, when it's hot, the body is a little bit lighter, a little juicy. The acidity is really soft and mild. The quality of the acidity is pretty complex, like some good citric and malic qualities, but the intensity isn't very high. 
even at this light of a roast. More syrupy. There are a lot of berry qualities. They're really pleasant. And just overall, being familiar with, with this origin and this family, like I really do think that the coffees that Gloria Rodriguez and her family grow in Apaneca, Ilamatepec region are exemplary coffees of, of El Salvador. It's like, it is the flavor that I expect from Salvadoran coffee. The variety, the red bone, is just exemplary of those characteristics. Uh, showcases the terroir really well, that volcanic soil that is responsible for like pumping so many nutrients into this coffee and making it that much more delicious. First sip, so good. Let's see how that body's developed as it's been cooling down and, and getting to a more pleasant drinking temperature. You can even control that a little bit by swirling. That double wall, make sure you don't burn your hand. And the single wall heel up here, when the swirling comes in contact, contact with oxygen can really open up the cup, can really like help bring, like coalesce those flavors together while still keeping them dis like distinct and identifiable. So I'm starting to get a little bit more toasty, like toasty grain, almost like a, like more of that florality is starting to come through again. Mm. Now that body is starting to thicken up, it's like a little bit heavier syrup, denser. The sweetness keeps on developing and shifting. And for me, that's a mark. That's a sign of really excellent quality coffees. It's like it's not just complex in its flavor profile in the moment. It's shifting and dynamic over time. So you get to experience different flavors and aromas and textures as you consume the coffee. That's true for a lot of coffees. But particularly like some of the like favorite coffees of ours from Central America or any like cup of excellence winner. That's one thing. That's kind of how I came to know Gloria through a friend who found her coffee in Cup of Excellence. And they they've consistently been in Cup of Excellence. Um, maybe not the top first or second place, but they're consistently up there, top eight and above the cultivation is and and the care off season like when the harvest is not happening like the year round maintenance is super important in order to like maintain quality and increase quality okay now that our coffee Let's see we're finally starting to steam a little less more of like an actual drinking temperature i don't have to sip it as much to cool it down mm. And now that syrupy body is kind of opening up back into more juiciness and the acidity is starting to reveal itself in a slightly more intense way, like in a vibrant, lively, pleasant way. It's making itself known. And it's letting you know that it's a, it's a real live product. Now really doubling down on that malic. And that malic acidity for, for, for those of you who are like, malic, what's that? It's like, think of like grapes and apples um, that kind of acidity. Sometimes we, we mention it as tart, even though it's not like tartaric acid or anything like that, but still it, it has a tart feeling. It's juicy, it's like fruit juice. But still with those very identifiable coffee flavors and that, that roasted hazelnut is still there. It's very, I like a crisp flavor, very clean and pronounced. And you have the caramel, roasted nuts, like roasted almonds, candied. Let me try some of that. Yeah. Here, have a little more. Get some of that warm stuff in there. Enjoy. Perfect.